Hey, David here with Hope All Is Going Well, and I hope your guitar and musical journeys are going famously. So exciting times. A couple days ago, Gibson just released a new guitar, the Theodore, as part of their archive series. I heard about this, uh, that they were going to release something new, and you know, you're looking forward to it, and then they come out with it, and then it's like, uh... I don't get it. And I just want to preface this whole thing by saying, you know, I'm a Gibson fan. I've been a Gibson fan a long time. In fact, you know, I love my Les Paul. I've had this guitar over 20 years and I'll probably never sell it. What I'm going to talk about is just my opinions. And clearly we're, when we're talking about aesthetics, you know, it's certainly beauties in the eye of the beholder. And I have to first say that I give a lot of props to Gibson because, you know, they're trying. They are trying. They're trying different things and they're taking risks. And I gotta give them, you know, some credit for at least they're trying. And Gibson sent the guitar out to some content creators and you could hear people playing it. There's plenty of videos up on it now, as well as there's a lot of discussion about it. Now, I don't have one of the guitars, so I can't play it, so I could show you pictures of it. Um, but the reviews are very mixed, you know, and it seems to me it comes down to if you're more of a collector, investor, or you like really like that vintage kind of vibe and the vintage retro thing, then you kind of think it's a good idea and you like it. But then I think on the other side, if you're more of a player uh, uh, and someone more who's not into collecting guitars but playing them and, and whatnot, and generally the reviews are, are not so good. First of all, I think it's a great story. It, it really is a good story. Now, you probably know it. I'll tell you a little bit about the story, but it's a great story and eh, not so great guitar. Personally, I, I just don't get it. I just, I think the guitar is not the best looking guitar. It's a little on the ugly side, you know, just my opinion. And the price tag, I think, is a total swing and a miss. $5,000 for a slab guitar, I, I think it's a big miss. But, you know, I'm sure they'll sell out. I'm sure they'll go up in value because it's such a limited run. And if you would like a free video lesson and ebook, you know, I have a killer ebook. It's my largest one that I've ever published. It's packed with over 30 scale diagrams. It has music theory in it, uh, modal playing, um, it's all kinds of neck diagrams and scale charts and the soloing strategies. It's a killer reference tool that you might be using throughout your guitar journey. I'll send it to you for free and a free video lesson. Just click on that link below. But it's a great story. And I think Gibson should have just left it at a story. You know, the story is Ted McCarty, who was the president of Gibson. I think he started as a vice president, but he was the president. And in 1957, he came, uh, he designed this guitar. And in fact, here's a drawing of it and they include a picture of the drawing with, with the guitar if you buy one. And Ted McCarty's a heavy hitter, you know, a very influential guitar guy, you know, big time innovator. And him and his team have their design fingerprints all over some of the most iconic guitars that Gibson's ever produced. The Les Paul, uh, the 335, the Flying V, the Firebird, it's Ted and his team, right? So you're talking about a major, major innovator and a guy with incredible vision and, and, and design expertise. So he came up with this drawing for this guitar, 1957, and apparently it was approved but never released. And then so the drawing went back in his desk or in his file cabinet and I, it was forgotten about supposedly and it just stayed there until 65 years later someone discovered it when going through some boxes or cartons or files. Oh, what's this? And then uh, they decided to produced the guitar 65 years later and they launched it a few days ago and they're launching it in three colors natural uh wine red and ebony and three colors very limited numbers are only making 106 of each color so 318 guitars that's it so very limited run and these are custom shop guitars it's a slab build uh alder body which is a very interesting choice because um gibson doesn't do a lot with alder right so alder body mahogany neck uh uh p90 soap bar pickups very old school build right it has the the walnut stripe running through it which is kind of cool right and the guitar is kind of you know has that futuristic kind of look to it and especially back then it must have been very futuristic looking but now it has that futuristic retro look and I, I just, it doesn't appeal to me. I don't like the tulip shaped guitars and they're pricing them at $49.99. And real quick, do me a quick favor and subscribe to the channel. You know, subscribing to the channel, that really helps us to keep bringing the content. And ring that subscription bell because then you'll be notified when we have new lessons posted. Also leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this video. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you'd like to see in videos to come. And if you like the video, please click the like button, give it a thumbs up, share it. And thank you so much for your support. So what do you think? You know, do you think the guitar is cool? It has this real freaky kind of tulip body shape um, with the hockey stick uh, headstock. 
And if you're into that vintage retro vibe, maybe you'll dig it. Personally, it's not for me. I don't like it. I don't think it's a good looking guitar. It's not a guitar that I'd say, wow, I just want to sit and play it and, you know, enjoy it and, and use it to be creative, right? I think Gibson is going after the collector market with this, obviously, because, you know, you're not going to see the guy down at the local club playing guitars like this. You're just not. No one's going to buy this and then just take it on the road and play it. I think it's more of an, a collector type thing. It's something that I think a lot of people are going to buy and probably just leave in the case and, you know, as an investment, like a hedge fund or something, which I think, which I am totally against. Personally, again, this is just my opinion. I think guitars are made to be played. They're made to be used as a creative tool for an art form to create music, right? Um, just like a painter uses paintbrushes, right? Or like a carpenter uses a hammer to create their art. You know, I think guitars should be worn and played and enjoyed, not stuck in the case, stuck under a bed somewhere or put in a vault somewhere just to, you know, collect you know, collect dust and to be uh, uh, to be turned into an investment. It just drives the prices of these guitars up more and more and more. And you see that in the market, the prices have gotten crazy. And for stuff like this, it's just such a limited small number of guitars and such a limited slice of the market, right? They're really going after that collector investment thing, which I think is just a swing and a miss by Gibson, even though they'll probably sell out of them, right? But I just don't think it's what most people would want Gibson to come out with right and gibson has been plagued by in my opinion these bad decisions swing and a miss after a miss after a miss year after year after year it really makes me say like how did some of these decisions get by everybody there you know they're sitting in the boardroom discussing what they're going to do and they're like oh yeah let's yes this is it this is it this, yes and it's like I don't get it and if you look back you know even over the you know look back the last 10 15 years you know, you have a series of just bad decisions from the, you know, not this CEO, but the former CEO going out and blaming the retailers for the issues at Gibson's. I mean, you never blame the retailers. Uh, robotic uh, guitar tuners to them taking so long and trying to correct their quality control issues to that awful play authentic video, right? And that is the current CEO. How did that, how could you sit there in a boardroom and watch that video? Yes, let's release that. How does that happen? And and to his credit, the CEO did apologize for that and said it was a mistake, but how could that ever, how could that ever be released? Just a bad look and not the message that you want to get across, right? Another bad decision to them buying all those different sound and audio file companies to where they dropped their guitar, uh, slice of Gibson to like 30% of their their business was from guitars it's like it's like concentrate on what you do best concentrate on the guitars you got to get back to the guitar end of it so there's just 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 how do these decisions happen you know that guitar I'm sorry not a good looking guitar so great story great story but I think they should have left this left it at a story here's the big question that nobody is answering if Ted McCarty really thought this guitar was the guitar you know or like Gibson or like you you read about oh the long lost Gibson guitar and this is the one it's finally being released that's a bunch of bullshit because if Ted really wanted this guitar release why didn't it get released right you're talking about a huge guitar innovator and a big he could have got this released if he thought that this was it and he could say oh well Gibson at that time they, then they released the SG and then that was that well then what about after that why didn't he release it after that if Ted really wanted this guitar released it would have been released right but it wasn't why not that's the question that needs to be answered why not because you, even after that, Ted just wouldn't have taken a great design that he loved and just forgotten about it. He would have refined it a little bit, even after the SG and after the V or whatnot, after some of those other guitars. He would have then released something based off of this model, right? That had tweaks to it or that had some of the DNA of this in it. And there wasn't, right? So I don't think Ted wanted this guitar released. And there was a reason why that design ended up on the bottom of his file cabinet and he didn't really go back to it. He could have even went back to it when he started his collaboration with Paul Reed Smith and have some aspect of this guitar and that, but he didn't. And I think there's a reason why it stayed there for so long. And, 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 and that's not what Gibson is saying. So, you know, I have to call bullshit on this long lost guitar thing because I don't think that's it at all. Just my opinion. When I look at this guitar, you know, I think of like a Rickenbacker. You know, Rickenbacker released in 1957, the 950, which was kind of like a tulip shape. And if you look at the, the Rickenbacker guitar, this Theodore is kind of like a slim down 
kind of body style of that. So when I look at this guitar, I think, you know, it kind of looks like a Rickenbacker, but then again, it, it kind of, my, my first thing is like, it looks like a Tysco, right? And that's not a knock on Tysco because Tysco came out with some cool stuff, right? Spectrum 5. Um, uh, or uh, Takai came out with something that had a little similar kind of pointy tulipy thing going on. So maybe if like, even though those came out later, but if the Rickenbacker mated with the Tysco and the Takai, maybe you get this, the Theodore. Uh, not a fan. So again, I don't know if it, if Ted McCarty would have wanted it to be named Theodore. I don't even know if he would wanted it, this guitar to be released. My gut opinion is saying he probably would not have wanted it released because he would have released it. Or he would have made that happen. Or some incarnation of it. And I wouldn't say it's like a total clunker. You know, and Gibson has released, as many guitar companies have, they have, Gibson has released some total clunkers in the past. I mean, do you remember things like the Reverse Flying V? How did that ever get by anybody in a boardroom, right? Or the Corvus, or the, the Modern, or the Firebird X, or the Firebird Zero, right? I mean, total clunkers. This, not as much as a clunker of that. And again, you know, I mean, they're trying. They're trying different things. But why does it have to be $5,000 for a slab guitar with a walnut stripe? You know, you know, I, I just don't get that. How does, you know, the average player justify spending $5,000? I, I, I don't get it. Help me. Put a comment below. Help me understand. I want to I wanna like it. I do. Final thoughts. Kudos for Gibson for trying. Kudos for Gibson for taking some risks. But I think it's a swing and a miss, even though they'll sell out. I think it's a swing and a miss. And I think it's a great story. And I think Gibson sh should have just left it as a great story. Because in my opinion, I think if Ted McCarty would have wanted this guitar to be released, it wouldn't have taken 65 years for it to be released, right? He would have made it happen and be released. There was a reason why this drawing was at the bottom of his desk or, or parked away in an old file cabinet somewhere. But let me know what you think. Leave a comment below. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel because that really helps us to keep bringing the content and ring that subscription bell because then you'll be notified when we have new lessons posted and I'll put a link in the YouTube description box if you'd like a free video lesson and an ebook. That's killer. It's a great reference ebook. Stay tuned. Lots more to come. Thank you so much for watching. Take care. Keep up all that hard work on those guitars and remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. So enjoy the journey. Take care, rock on. See you soon.